It's the SmackDown after WrestleMania 33. All the fallout and some intriguing things happen. We see a SmackDown Women's Championship match. The continuing saga with a former Wyatt family member making his return. And not one, but two main roster call-ups. And, um... I think you guys get a hint of which one is the big one. All this, and we're going to cover a little bit more in this week's edition of the SmackDown Rebound. Hello, everybody. My name is Connor, a.k.a. OK, Fabe, your official SmackDown video correspondent for OneWrestling.com, of course, One Wrestling Video's YouTube channel. And we welcome you guys to another edition of the SmackDown Rebound. We're going to cover everything from this week's edition of SmackDown Live from, of course, April 4th, 2017, the official SmackDown after WrestleMania. A lot of interesting things happen, and let's just say uh, the, the, the future of WWE is going to be quite intriguing, to say the least. Now, before I get into the official results and review, don't forget, guys, we always like to hear hear what you guys have to say. So leave us your thoughts on this week's edition of SmackDown Live down in the comment section. Make sure you also hit us up on the various social media, including Twitter, Facebook, for myself, at OKFabe, of course, Big Ray, of course, everyone over at Big Slam Nation, of course, the legendary, the iconic Mr. Bill After. All the links for them are down in the description box below. Hit that thumbs up if you guys like these videos, and of course, subscribe for more awesome content right here at One Wrestling Video, and of course, check out my YouTube channel as well to youtube.com slash OKFaber. Um... Oh, wow. <laughs> um, needless to say, the Raw after WrestleMania has always got a lot of buzz, a lot of hype. I mean, heck, WWE just did a uh, 24 documentary on the network hyping up the Raw after WrestleMania. And I know I was at last year's. In fact, I'm pretty sure if you watch that documentary, you might see a familiar sign. I don't know which. I don't know what. I don't know what sign it is. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> But SmackDown had more interest. Was it going to have the same buzz? Was it going to have the same interest that Raw did? Was it going to be able to carry and live up to the hype that its Monday Night Predis or Monday Night counterpart has? Well, yes and no. But needless to say, this was definitely a SmackDown uh, for, re for for amazing memory. And I'm getting tongue tied because I'm thinking of one particular superstar making his main roster debut. <laughs> And let's get right into things. So first, we actually kick things off with Randy Orton, who actually gets a mixed reaction. Sea of mixes of booze, too. Uh, that's that's interesting. He says they remember when he said that, you know, when the time is right to screw someone. We also says, make sure you beat their ass at WrestleMania because now he is the master and the crowd boos until Wyatt does his weird, creepy interruption thing. Wyatt says the era of Wyatt is far from over and that he has his rematch coming and he wants a special match that will push Randy Orton not only his body but also his mind. He plans on bringing him down in what he calls a House of Horrors match. Okay, we have no idea what this match is. We have no idea what the stipulations are. We don't know what's going to be entailed for it. But of course, Orton, being the lovable champion that he is, accepts unconditionally, uh, asking for Wyatt to come to the ring, which of course he does. He does that weird Wyatt, da, 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 and he's behind Randy Orton. He says he's here, and he starts pounding on him. The two start brawling, and Randy Orton looks like he's setting up for an RKO, but actually he gets pulled out of the ring by a returning Eric Rowan who has... I'm sorry, it's the coolest sheep mask they've done so far. You know how they've done the sheep mask variations? Well, this one has like a gas mask part to it. So it's got like a goggle on one side and like tubing. It just looks really creepy and really awesome. And please, WWE Shop, please tell me you sell those. Um, in any case, of all people, Luke Harper coming in to help make the save. And ultimately, we find ourselves in the main event later on for the evening. Of course, Bray Wyatt and Eric Rowan in a tag team match. And I, I can't do it as good as Tay Long <laughs> against Randy Orton and Luke Harper for later on in the evening. We see Miz and Maurice backstage saying how Cena should have thanked him for what he did to, for Nikki proposing at WrestleMania. Um, but saying that they mentioned that they will indeed call out John Cena and Nikki Bella here tonight. And since the Superstar Shakeup is coming, this will be the last time you will ever see John Cena and Nikki Bella in quite some time on SmackDown. We'll get to that. Don't worry. It gets really interesting. Anyway, we have the SmackDown Women's Championship matchup next. Naomi against the former champion Alexa Bliss. A very solid matchup between the two. Alexa Bliss, I thought, was going to sneak out with the victory in this one, to be totally honest with you guys. Uh, but it ended up actually being Naomi's win, as Bliss was able to uh, use some furious kicks and actually tried to use the ropes as leverage to get the pinfall, but unfortunately the referee did see this and catches it. Naomi then comes and quickly flips Alexa over into a submission and retains. I've never seen Naomi to do a submission. That's kind of 
interesting and different, um, to, to say the least. I mean, wow, just, okay, cool. Naomi retains the SmackDown Women's Championship, and rightfully so. A solid matchup. I thought it went a little uh, shorter than we I was kind of hoping for, but still good stuff between Naomi and Alexa Bliss. Now, here comes the fun part. This is... You know, pro wrestling is filled with moments, and one of the good, you know, feel good moments is one of them that's coming up right now. Kurt Hawkins makes his way to the ring and issues an open challenge to anyone out there who wants to face him here on SmackDown. And he says he's going to give everyone till the count of 10. And that's right, your first NXT main roster call up for SmackDown Live. Last night we had the revival for Raw, and tonight we have the perfect 10. Ty Dillinger. Ty Dillinger officially now on the SmackDown roster, pretty much making quick work of uh, Kurt Hawkins in this one. Crowd going nuts, of course. The 10 chance going absolutely crazy. It was, again, one of those great feel-good moments, absolutely for sure. Ty, of course, getting the win uh, via the tiebreaker. Uh, he has to. I mean, at this point, he has to at this point. It's, it's just great. It's cool to see Ty Dillinger. I'm, I'm, I'm hopeful and curious to see where he goes. I kind of hope he's going to go towards the Intercontinental title. Uh, that would be certainly interesting. But, I mean, the guy, the, the 10 chant is just ah, a mm, feel-good moment. Feel good moment. Anyway, speaking of feel good moments, we get go from one to another. Miz and Maurice come out dressed up as John Cena and Nikki Bella, like they did with the Total Bella skit, full in outfit and music and all. They come out and mention how they're fake and that effective immediately they are leaving WWE for Hollywood. And as soon as they're leaving, a gentleman shows up with a violin. Wow. I, I, as soon as I saw that, I legitimately freaked out because I think you guys all knew who it was. Not all of it, not everybody knew who it was, but I knew, and I think most of you guys did too. And it was just, I, I can't believe they did this. I can't believe they did this as soon. There were rumors going around. There was you know, uncertainty if this was going to happen. But of course, he plays the familiar music of the former two-time NXT champion, the man who lost to Bobby Roode at NXT TakeOver Orlando this past Saturday. The second main roster debut was, of course, for Shinsuke Nakamura. Nakamura didn't really do anything other than come out with his entrance, his music, the crowd going absolutely berserk and doing his, you know, fall away and, and just, I'm, I'm at a loss for words. Now, a couple of things I need to make mention of this as far as Nakamura now being on SmackDown. Number one, I still think with the superstar shakeup coming next week on Raw, I still believe Nakamura will stay over on SmackDown. That's my guess. Number two, I also venture a guess that if Miz stays, he would be a great first opponent for Shinsuke Nakamura, in my opinion. I think he would be an absolute perfect candidate because Miz has a great way of hyping up a match. And I think, honestly, and this is my third part, there are so many interesting matches that you could have Nakamura have on SmackDown. A lot of them. You essentially have a fresh new roster for Nakamura to face off. I mean, can you imagine Nakamura versus Randy Orton, Nakamura versus Bray Wyatt, Nakamura versus Dean Ambrose, Baron Corbin, Nakamura versus AJ Styles. Yeah, I know we saw that in Japan, but still, it's, I have to remain calm. I have to be cool, professional about this. But I'm super pumped and super excited for this. Needless to say. Um, next up, we had an intriguing matchup between... It's a street fight between Baron Corbin and Dean Ambrose. Awesome stuff. Was it the greatest street fight I've ever seen? No. But I kind of wish we got this at WrestleMania in some regards. We It was a non-title match, but they're brawling all over the place outside the ring using announcer's table. Uh, back from break, there are chairs and just everything set up. Corbin throwing Dean through a table in the corner. Corbin then pulls out like a leather strap and just starts whipping, uh, you know, just pounding on on uh, Dean Ambrose with the, with the, uh, the leather strap. And then, you know, of course, Dean gets his own chance to use it himself. And then he dives outside the ring through a table. I mean, it was just absolute calamity and chaos. The finish comes where Corbin actually throws a steel chair against Dean on the turnbuckle, grabbing him, then hitting him, of course, the end of days to win. It was it was just a very awesome match, to be honest with you. And like I said, I kind of wish we got this at WrestleMania. That's just my only wish on that one. It was a very awesome street fight to watch. Really cool stuff. Props and kudos and praise. But Corbin may have got the win, but he's not the Intercontinental Champion. Just keep that in mind. 
Out comes next is Shane McMahon, uh, who is to address the superstar shakeup that is supposed to happen next week. Uh, all he says is that anyone on Raw should be praying they end up on SmackDown because they are the land of opportunity. But then he gets cut off from his opponent at WrestleMania, AJ Styles. AJ, who says he doesn't want to go anywhere because this is the house that Styles built. And then he says he does owe a, he does owe Shane something and extends his hand. The two men shake out of a sign of respect. But then as he's turning around, he goes for a flinching fake punch. Punch and Shane ready to fight as the two just bow and you know kind of nod in agreement. It is a sign of respect for the two warriors. AJ poses and leaves. As much as I don't, as much as AJ does not want to leave SmackDown, I unfortunately have this gut feeling that we're probably going to see AJ Styles end up on Monday Night Raw uh, again. As much as I'd love to see him, especially with a f- match against Nakamura. Mmm. Mm-mm-mm. The other thing I wanted to mention as well, too, is I think it's also a smart move for them to bring Nakamura over to SmackDown because if it is to believe that John Cena will be taking time off from WWE, which is uh, evident by him not being on, of course, this week and supposedly going back to doing a filming schedule, SmackDown will be lacking a top star. So to replace that top star, you have Shinsuke Nakamura. You have yourself a very intriguing SmackDown. So it's going to be very interesting going forward. Main event time, Randy Orton and Luke Harper against Bray Wyatt and Eric Rowan. Uh, the heels do a great job of isolating, you know, basically uh, Randy Orton first and Luke Harper getting in, being able to clean out house. But then, of course, they get isolated and isolate uh, Luke Harper, allowing him to get the hot tag to Randy Orton, who, of course, comes in and cleans house as well, too, taking Bray Wyatt down. It looks like he's about to set up with an RKO on Bray Wyatt, but he does this weird magic thing and then he appears halfway down the ramp on the outside of the ring, allowing Eric Rowan to hit the to eat the RKO and get the pinfall for Randy Orton and Luke Harper. Wyatt looking confused, but at the same time, like he's strategizing in some way that he has a plan as Orton and Harper celebrate on top to end SmackDown from after WrestleMania. Whew, a lot of, a lot of tongue tied there. I'm sorry. I'm just, I'm super excited for Nakamura. I am super excited for Shinsuke Nakamura and for Ty Dillinger to be on SmackDown now. Um, the thing that in general here is that nothing is guaranteed, nothing is secured, nothing is locked in 100% because we do have the superstar shakeup next Monday night or this coming Monday night on Raw. So our roster, the SmackDown roster and the Raw roster could change drastically. We don't know what's going to happen. We don't know the rules. We don't know the stipulations. We don't know how many people. We don't know if even, you know anybody's excluded. Um so it's kind of bittersweet that Ty Dillinger and Nakamura are both on SmackDown. I would argue that I don't think either one of them are going to go anywhere. And the same goes with the revival over on Monday Night Raw because of the fact that they wouldn't have wasted them debuting the first week after WrestleMania if they're just going to switch up. It would it would make any sense. Um, I, I did enjoy the SmackDown overall. My biggest critique, though, is, and this is only a minor one, is that I would have switched Orton and Harper and Wyatt and Rowan's tag team match for the top hour show segment. So essentially, I would have had the tag team match that we saw as the main event be the, the middle of the card, and I would have had Nakamura's debut with maybe Nakamura having some sort of physicality with The Miz to close out. SmackDown because Nakamura making his na- main debut I think is a big deal and the WWE did a good job of treating it as a big deal but I felt like considering that nothing really progressed in the Wyatt Orton saga uh, outside of the tag team match I mean essentially we're still kind of with the Orton versus Wyatt mentality yes Eric Rowan's back I just I would have switched those two. That's the only thing I really would have one done different here. The street fight between Corbin and uh, Corbin and Ambrose was awesome. Again, love the Nakamura segment. Love the fact that Ty Dillinger is on SmackDown now, and of course the SmackDown Women's Championship was a very solid matchup as well too. Uh, compared to its uh, Monday Night counterpart, of course Raw had three hours, and I, I honestly believe a more raucous crowd. So uh, I think in terms of comparing the two this week, I think Raw was the overall better show. I know, I know, I shouldn't be saying that because it's SmackDown. But 
not just take anything away from SmackDown either. SmackDown still had an amazing show tonight. I'm super pumped and excited. I can't wait to see what happens next week with the Superstar Shakeup. And I want to hear from you guys. What do you guys think of this week's SmackDown? What was your favorite part, your least favorite part? What are you looking forward to to the Superstar Shakeup? And here's a big one for you Nakamura. What feuds and matches do you want to see Nakamura have now? on the SmackDown main roster. We'd love to hear your thoughts, suggestions, and your comments. Again, down in the comment section, hit us up on the various social media, hit us up on the Twitter, Facebook, all that stuff. The links for myself at OKFave, okay Big Ray at Big Ray Show, the entire Big Slam Nation, of course, the legendary, the iconic Mr. Bill Aptor at Aptor One Wrestling. All our links are down in the description box below. Make sure you hit the thumbs up video if you guys like these SmackDown reviews, and of course, subscribe for more One Wrestling content. And of course, check out my YouTube channel as well too if you guys want to. youtubecom slash Faber. Thank you guys again for watching. Appreciate love and support. And to quote the legendary iconic Mr. Bill Aptor, we will see you at the matches.